Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, me head. Dana White from the uh, the cage guys doesn't have to worry about any of you uh, breaking into uh, mixed martial arts. Uh, you know, like um, the kids, uh, the YouTuber kid that boxes and fights, um, Jake, which I've been on his brother's uh, podcast. The um, and that's an interesting story for those of you that uh, the kid is one of the leading podcasters, the older brother, uh, and the younger brother is now boxing and knocking people out, and, and now he wants to go in the cage, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but um, how do kids 24, 25 years old like that differ from, um, and they're younger than millennials, how do they differ from millennials? Well, I've met their father because when I went to their to be interviewed, uh, other than the schedule got all fucked up and a couple of other things, the, uh, I met the dad, which I'm positive is like no dad for, of you guys in this room. I'm stone cold, a thousand percent positive. Because um, most of his kids are, you could uh, say maniacs, crazy. But they're both 24 and 25 and rich. And the father, uh, although I only met him once for two, three hours, uh, obviously uh, has raised the boys to uh, on the uh, on the nice side, think outside the box, because they certainly are earning money in a new, you know, some kids have art. And some kids are meta this, and some kids has crypto fuck, and but the, the kids, and that's it's pretty unusual uh, that the kids would have that kind of self confidence, not being martial artists and only starting into this endeavor maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, but it's the dad, the dad. There was a slide yesterday. You may or may not remember it. Um, it said uh, one of the um, all stars of the um, World Series, a kid named Pena, was the most valuable player. No relation to me. And they asked him, how did it start? And he says, it all started with my dad. And next, my family. And this, and the, they supported him when he, he wasn't such a great baseball player, is the essence uh, of his little talk. And then he got the, the most valuable player. Of course, I like the sign, uh, MVP Pena. So you know, I made a slide of it. Um, and it starts at home. And self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years. There used to be a thing in, the, in Catholic Mass, pre-Vatican II, 1965, for you aficionados of the Catholic religion. Um, uh, Vatican Council I and then Vatican Council II, when all the old fart cardinals and the Pope got together and decided how they were going to run the church for, you know, for the next 500 years. And it has started in 1965. But before 1965, the Catholic Church was, Mass was said in Latin. Latin. And the priest had his back to the parishioners. And he's doing all his hocus pocus here. Post-1965, mass was said in English. And he looked you in the eye, not more or less. That was, that was the thought. And the, the far-seeing new Catholic church. But pre-Vatican 1965, there was a, a thing in the homily. The homily is the, the bullshit part of the, the mass where he's you know, uh, be good because uh, uh, Christ fed uh, 5,000 people with a loaf of bread. Eh, bullshit, bullshit. Whether that's bullshit or not, whether it's true. I've actually been to that place where he supposedly fed people and made one bottle of uh, water into 10,000 glasses of wine. But the, uh, during that part of the homily, they said something to the effect, going back to uh, 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 when it was in uh, 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 Hebrew, that you give me your child the first seven years and the church will own them for life. Literally translated in today. Self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years. And somebody in the church, and the Catholic Church has been around arguably the longest of all the religions, uh, uh, formalized religions, uh, they knew that you, you get the little shit before... Seven or eight, 
and you fucking own them. Like, I'm a, uh, I'm a wannabe altar boy. And the Catholic Church has their foot right up my ass in the Prada red shoes, gold lace from the Pope, if you'd be coming out where my tongue is. The Spartans took the kids away from the parents at seven, eight years. And one, we, the reason we say seven or eight, because like somebody last night wasn't sure when they were born, uh, because they were born out in the Tule's, out in the weeds someplace. So they say that they were born on special events. If you go to the African continent, uh, almost everybody you'll meet that's in the bush was born in 1939, because that's when the war broke out, and that's, everybody remembers that, 1939. Now, I met guys when I was there several times on uh, safaris, I mean, that were, they were born in 1919, not 1939, but 1939 was the birth date on, on their birth certificate. Um, and the Spartans, the seven, eight years have been important for, forever. And those are the, the years that, especially after I started keeping data in the seventh or eighth year, coincidentally, of this seminar, that um, the um, more or less parents uh, and grandparents take those first years for granted. Allegedly, uh, I wasn't around, so I can't, you know, I, I was a crappy father, I'm a shitty grandfather, and I don't expect to be a great grandfather, you know, great grandfather. But those are the years that the kids are fun. Unless a, ki a kid is, done poop poop in his diapers, they're always smiling. They're always laughing. And even some kids, when they go, you know, to the bathroom in their uh, diapers, are still laughing. And then time goes on and your parents have more effect on you. And although they say that uh, teenage years, because your, uh, your, um, your testosterone, and men and women have testosterone levels are going up, and they call them the, you know, the, the hard years because teenagers, uh, I guess since, since, uh, since uh, Cain and Abel have always thought that they knew better. But these first few years of life have always been important. And what are you taught? Pretty much other than if you're lucky, you should be potty trained by the time you're seven or eight. I'm now informed that kids at seven or eight, some aren't potty trained. Because there's a new natural phenomenon to potty or not potty train. You'll wipe your ass when you get tired of having shit in it. That, that's not how they say it, but that's the bottom line. You know, when you get tired of having poop in your pants, then you learn how to clean yourself. Well, now fast forward 15, 18, 25 years old. The kid that couldn't wipe his pants is not likely to know anything else. Uh, and, uh, and that's why, you know, I've told you yesterday quite emphatically that uh, a lot of the teenagers go off the rails. They make a lot of money. They go off, not all of them, but a lot of them do go off the rails. So the, uh, in the beginning of the seminar, we didn't have this outline. And the outline, uh, well, if you remember, for those of you, and some of you have been following me a long time, uh, several years ago, I used to give a year mentor program with the seminar. And we did data, we did testing, and it didn't mean shit. In fact, the, we can directly correlate the year mentor program to lack of activity. I wouldn't have believed that before, but I know because we've tested for it. And 85% of our seminar, or our deals done in the first year with a year long mentor program were done between the 10th and 11th and 12th month. When I went to school, to the extent that I attended class, which wasn't very often, uh, if I did anything for a test, it was the night before the test or the morning of the day of the test. Otherwise, I didn't study. You know, I was just a fuck up. When um, I'm going to visit the, the headmaster of my high school here in a few weeks, uh, they give you a lock, the lockers, half a locker. I don't know who got a full lockers, but I certainly didn't. And when you get your books, you put them, I put them in the locker in, in the first day of the semester, which was somewhere in September. And then the last day of the semester was sometime in early June. And I take the books out and there would be a dust ring where the books were sitting in my locker because I never moved them. I never cracked the book from the 8th, 9th, 10th of September 
till the 10th, 12th, 14th of June. Literally. If I didn't learn it sitting asleep in the back of the room by osmosis, I didn't learn it. I didn't learn it. Um, the, uh, the only class I, I kind of semi woke up for was a class called Contemporary American Problems, which I alluded to yesterday, and uh, they talked about sex. And you would have been 17 years old. The girls might have been 16. I, I kind of listened to that a little bit, and then I fell back asleep. They got so tired of saying, Pena, are you awake? It was like a, an extra bell in the class because they said five, six, 10, 15 times, Pena, are you awake? Would somebody wake up, Danny? And that's how I went through high school. I had a 2.55 average out of four, and I only got that, but I don't know, Allah, I don't have any idea because I never opened a book. Now, coincidentally, there's a lot of data going back to the educational system in America is fucked. Uh, but when did it really get fucked? When did you really, because a lot of people, my mentees homeschool. They teach their kids themselves. Now, we have a lost generation now because of Corona, because most of the people that were responsible for homeschooling because the kids can go to school are brain dead. So in this country, uh, most of the kids that should be doing eighth year are now after two years of not going to school doing fifth year math. And they call it maths here in this country. I don't know why. It's plural. And so we have a lost generation. And that lost generation is not similar in other parts of the world other than Asian countries. Now, in 2010, more or less, they went back in the last 150 years and they decided that American education peaked out. Peaked out in 1963. Coincidentally, the year I was graduated from high school. Peaked out. A high school degree in 1963 is equivalent to about a junior college, an associate degree, uh, like uh, the first two years of college. And it's been going down ever since. So I happened to graduate at the peak of uh, education in America. And you learn less every single year since 1963 in America. Every single year. Not every other year, not every fifth year, but every single year. And yet teachers are not poorly paid, but one of the poorest paid professions. And two or three of you in the audience have parents uh, that are Teachers, God bless them. I take my hat off to them. I don't know how they can do it. Um, so, so now we, ha we have uh, the interesting thing, and I've been making fun of data off and on for a couple of days now, but we have all this data, and really, uh, and everybody wants your data, and there's a, a gazillion apps, et cetera, et cetera. But what do we do with the data? Now, if they mine the data as much as I do, then gathering all this data is good. Okay, but normally they're mining the data to, to be able to sell you a better Mercedes Benz or, or a more expensive Tom Ford sports coat, et cetera, et cetera. Which I'm not so sure that, that the, the world needs that or the world wouldn't be better off without that. Um, but we have and we know, uh, and the reason I canceled the year long mentor program is because you use it as a crutch. In hindsight, 95% of the companies that I've been chairman of for the last 30 years, you've used me as a crutch. Not that I did anything, but it was a psychological crutch. It's like having Mike Tyson in your corner yesterday afternoon to tell you what to do when you're choking, trying to get your mouthpiece out. And it was um, the, uh, and I look at the, the nuances of the boxing which we're going to talk about, uh, not the fact that uh, almost everyone, not everyone, could barely breathe after one round. Not everyone, but almost every single one of you could barely breathe. One fucking round. And so when Stevie and I, the, the referee, decided we were going to do, originally, 
we were never con considering five minute rounds like some of you smart asses said and blah, blah. Uh, but we were considered three minute rounds and then I, when i started boxing uh, uh we considered two minute rounds is what i do with him when, I, when i'm sparring with him and then we decided that the one minute rounds with a one minute interval and uh, a choice to have a second one minute round okay now this program is based on under promising and over deliver over delivering if you put as much effort to those of you that box a fraction of as much effort as you box into this program you're a billionaire Because almost all of you were out of gas after one round. But you sucked up your pantyhose, didn't you? And those of you that were out of the most gas, you know exactly who I'm talking to. You sucked up your pantyhose, didn't you? Your pride, your huevos, your manhood was on the line, wasn't it? In one womanhood. But your manhood was on the line. Why did you suck up your pantyhose there? And you can't do it with this program because your primal instincts came out. Most of you fight like girls, even the tougher guys. You wouldn't have got past 14 years old in my neighborhood, if that's the best you got. But the kids in my neighborhood fought every day, four or five times a day. And even if you're a monkey, if you fight every day, it's not that we fought to stay alive, that would be an exaggeration. But you fight every day, four or five times a day, by the time you go through grade school, which is five years, and you go through junior high school, which is three years, and you go through three more years of high school, you, you can protect yourself. And when you don't do that, unless some of you have taken some boxing lessons, uh, those of you that have taken boxing lessons should get your money back. Because, you know, but as Mike Tyson would say, I mean, everybody's got a plan until I punch him in the face. This program is that. I've never seen a business plan fail on paper. And that's why we don't have business plans. Because it's just, you know, the first shot, and you forget your business plan. The first shot, you forget you've got an anchor chairman. The first shot, and that's why there's so many practices. I heard somebody uh, last night in... Uh, in the uh, mess hall way we ate last night, about halfway up the table on the left side, <clears throat> uh, was talking about, um, not, not exactly like I'm gonna say it, I don't, need why, I don't see why I need 75 to 125 presentations, which you'll have if you go through the steps. And the, the guy that's saying it is probably not the worst guy in the class, but one of the worst guys in the class that needs it. So you won't do the presentations. And when I say follow the steps, I mean you started the 20th largest accounting firm, and then the 18th largest accounting firm, and then the 15th largest accounting firm, then the 10th largest accounting firm, then the big four. And you go from 20 to the big four depending on your own skill sets. And when you're practicing, I practice an hour Plus, for every hour that I'm up here during the seminar, I have practiced an hour before you got here. And I could give this fucking thing in a coma dead. I could do, give this seminar cremated. And so by the time you get uh, the best case that I've ever had, 1993, I had a kid that um, uh, uh, um, it was an epileptic. Epileptic. Is that right? Epileptic. Uh, and he stuttered. And... Uh, and I planted in his head that Churchill stuttered. I planted in his head as many famous people as I could find, or they could find, Google fucking that stuttered. And there's been a lot of very people, uh, very uh, successful people that stuttered. Uh, and it's not true that stuttering is a direct link to IQ, that's bullshit. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of people that overcame stuttering uh, as you practice. Well, this kid that was an epileptic, uh, at the beginning of uh, 1993, uh, coincidentally about the time I, I gave my first seminar, um, uh, by the end, uh, within a year, the year mentor program, he won the Kodak, Kodak's not around, the company Kodak's not around anymore, he won the uh, Kodak uh, Public Speaking Award from a stutter 
to public speaking award. And now he's, he's a big shit uh, in the, uh, he's a minority, he's a Latino. Uh, and he's a big shit in the Latino community in the United States. Um, the, uh, and he tells a story about how he stuttered. Blah, blah, blah. He doesn't use my name though. Because my name in the Latino community is an embarrassment. And even though I made him, just like I, uh, you know, uh, brushed my teeth this morning, um, he doesn't want to be linked to the fact that a person is crass, a person is, you know, uh, whatever, uh, is the reason for his success. But getting back to um, the um, Vatican II, 1965, this seminar has had many... Uh, evolutions, iterations. And we've gone back a few times and we've gone forward most of the time. Uh, and the times that we've gone back, we went back to see what the data was and the data, i.e. for the a mentor program. So we went from 12 months to nine months, to six months, to three months, to two months, to one month. And the one month mentor program ended about I want to see a year or two before Corona hit. So is the fact that we're up 125% because you, the motivated sellers were so motivated that you were sold more easily and or because you didn't have me to use as a crutch in the mentor program? We don't know that. I know in my guts it, but I can't show you vis a -vis study. But I know that the, the, the people, um, like four or five of you boxing last night, um, you, um, it's like you had something to prove. Only you know what that something to prove was. I can guess because some of those that, that boxed like they had something to prove, I already talked to them one-on-one. -on -one. So I can connect some dots. But for those of you that I only have the written material and I don't, haven't spoken to you individually, it's only a wild ass guess, but it's a pretty educated wild ass guess for those of you that had something to prove. And, and, and that's why we do it. Now, this chart is the post mentor program, uh, or so to speak, recipe for success. And this is to do a deal in 60 days, the, uh, which now we know we've done it in 26 days. On the weekly reports that you're gonna get on your thumb drive in a couple of days, at the top of the weekly report is this. At the bottom of the weekly report is this. So it's two times you have to look at it. And you're gonna have a couple of people that come up to speak in the next couple of days that will tell you that whenever they lose focus and they put this on the screensaver and various places that you can look at uh, to remind you. Um, because 10 days comes and goes very quickly. And that's Saturdays and Sundays, that's holidays, that's Valentine's Day, that's your wife or significant other's birthday. 10 days, doesn't matter. That you have your chairman and a completed board. Now, if it takes you five calls or five interactions for every board member, and you have 10 board members, because I like bigger boards, as I've told you, rather than smaller boards, you're gonna have 50 interactions, okay? You can make 50 interactions, and a day is pushing it. I can make 50 interactions in a day, but see, I don't say, how, oh, how are you, how are your kids, but bam, fuck you, bam, fuck you, bam, fuck you, strong email to follow because I know time is money. Tape yourself from the first time that you talk to a potential board member. There's a word here in English, uh, English, English, called gobsmacked. I'm not sure what that word means, but you will be fucking gobsmacked how inefficient you are. These phone conversations should take 15 to 45 seconds. Seconds, not minutes. 
You're not trying to build up a uh, spirit of core. Uh, you're not none of that. You just want to get answers out of their mouth that are consistent with the answers that you want to hear. So 10 days, a board and a chairman. The next 20, uh, 10 days, or a cumulative 20 days, you're getting your outside accountants and lawyers. Why is it taking you the same amount of time to get outside accountants and lawyers as opposed to completing your board? Very simple, because your board, you're giving free founders equity. So they want, they're looking for a reason to love you because they're broke. Whereas the accounting and law firms couldn't give a shit less if you dropped that on the phone. So that's why it takes about the same length of time, even though you're more polished now, because you're practiced. We have a guy, um, the, uh, he's retired now, and uh, went into healthcare, and he's been to the seminar two or three times, um, and the, uh, uh, he uh, has two weaknesses, Chinese women uh, and, and gambling. That's a bad combination, but anyway, he has two weaknesses. And so uh, he, um, when he did his uh, first deal, he wanted to have a party at the Four Seasons. And he wanted to invite everybody that had told him no. From the chairman, all the board members, the accounting firm, the law firm, the banks, the motivated sellers. And this is when I was still him in the mentor program, and I told him it was a shitty idea. I told him it was stupid. And he says it's going to cost about 10 grand. But he went ahead and did it anyway. I was wrong. I'm one of the few girls that admits when he's wrong. I was wrong. It cost him 12 grand. I wasn't there. It was at the Four Seasons in San Francisco. And he had about, uh, now, he says 500 people there. His Chinese wife says uh, 250, 300. Well, anyway, he had a few hundred people there that said no. And um, he gave the check to the Four Seasons. You know, when you go to these uh, uh, game shows and they give you a big cardboard check that's seven feet long and this wide. And it said $12,300, which was the fee he paid Four Seasons Hotel in San Francisco for the hors d'oeuvres and the drinks to feed these fucking two, three, four hundred uh, morons. It was the best $12,000 I've seen anybody ever spend. It's like the, the Peter Harasti. The two best deals, this ranks up there on another column because it was the best marketing money I ever saw. He never had a prospect again in his life. Never. He didn't pick up a call for a cold call. He was inundated. The accountants that turned him down found deals. The lawyers that turned him down found deals. The motivated sellers that told him fuck off found deals. The board members that turned him down found deals. I have nobody, I'm not suggesting you do that because, you know, 10, 12 grand is not, uh, and for some of you, that's a lot of money, but I'm not suggesting you, you waste or spend it uh, uh, ill-advised, but I'm just telling the results. But the real reason for this story is this guy had made 22 bank presentations. Number 17, 18, 19, 21, and 22, the bank said yes. Number one through 16, the bank said no. Same presentation, but bank 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and he did, he, he, for whatever reason, he liked commercial debt, okay? And he didn't want to do the seller finance, only a small portion, 20, 30% seller finance. And as he said here, uh, we don't use the uh, YouTube anymore, or uh, not YouTube, excuse me, um, webinar anymore. Uh, because by the time I did the 18th presentation, I was pretty, pretty good. You know, I wasn't perspiring. I wasn't, uh, you know, hyperventilating like many of you uh, uh, after the first round of uh, boxing because he practiced. And this guy is a, he's smoother than you in this group. Now, his background, um, he went to undergraduate school at Princeton. This doesn't mean anything. He's not successful because of this. And he went to graduate school at Columbia. Uh, um, and he uh, was in love uh, with, uh, who, who's the girl from uh, uh, Hannibal Lecter, played opposite Hannibal Lecter in the movie? Jodie Foster. He was in love with Jodie Foster, who's gay. And he followed her around like a puppy dog for, uh, uh, at 
Yale, I think, or undergraduate, and then she finally told him, you know, I like girls, and so he was crestfallen. So this is his claim to fame. He was an articulate guy. He looked better than he sounded, uh, but he practiced. You're, you, you will not have a propensity, not you, but the groups over 29 and a half years, to practice. You just won't. If you film yourself and you tape yourself, you might because you'll be embarrassed of how you sound. When, Mar uh, when Andres Milner gets up and talks on the screen uh, later today, he's going to say uh, he practiced, 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 and then practiced. When he said he, he couldn't stand it anymore, he practiced again. And I've told you in the last 29 and a half years, he's come the closest to performing the program exactly like you're supposed to, about 95%. And he's created in three years for himself about 100 million euros. And he had a full-time job as an analyst, 60 hours a week, and a full-time job, QLA bot, 60 hours a week. Now I'm gonna talk just a minute about some of your students. If you're not about to graduate, Walk away, okay? Uh, some of you uh, have other jobs. Um, we have had more than 50% of the people that have been successful with this program had a second job. And or were a student like Belgium Awful. Keep your second job because it's going to take you significantly longer to get your first deal done than you hope, dream, you know, some of you have dropped deadlines because you, whatever, somebody's going to cut your throat or, well, anyway, I'm telling you, it's going to take you two or three times longer, and it's going to cost you five to ten times more in emotional capital than you have banked on. Um, the, um, so now we've got your accountants and lawyers after ten more days. <clears throat> And now you're going to be pre-interviewing multiple banks for lending parameters. This is a pre-interview. You're not bringing them a deal. You're just, remember, as I went through yesterday, you go into the Wall Street Journal, you're looking at a tombstone uh, for Cardinal Health. They raised $11 billion. Uh, there's the bulge bracket banks, then the second bracket banks, then the third bracket banks, and you're starting to talk to the fourth bracket banks. And you may work your way up to the not the bulge back, and Goldman Sachs is not interested in anything you've got to say. The very highest and most prestigious of the banks that are willing to listen to your uh, tale of woe are first bracket under bulge bracket, and those are the Bank of America's, uh, et cetera, uh, the Deutsche Bank on the big side. Most of your deals pre-$100 million will be in the third and fourth tier banks, not the major banks. Now, we're going to talk about because you, you know, well, how, how do I elephant hunt and dinosaur hunt, Mr. Penny? I don't want to fuck around with this chicken shit stuff. If you're not saying that, you're thinking it. Okay, we're going to talk about that. And 95% um, of you will be dissuaded from going after elephants and um, dinosaurs after you hear some elephant and dinosaur stories from their lips. Well, well I'm not willing to do that. <laughs> so anyway, we'll, we'll get to that. But this is not the elephant and dinosaur model. This is the regular model. First deal, 750 to a million 250. Second deal, a million 250 to 2 million. Third deal, uh, 2 million to 3 million, blah, blah, blah. And then after seven or eight or nine deals, depending on the size of the deals, you will have built up equity to your own account. Like you've built up equity in your house because you made payments. So now you're going to have between two, three, four, as much as five or six million dollars built up equity to your account, to the 60%, to the two thirds, you'll have about six million dollars, and to the uh, three thirds, you'll have about 10 million, eight to 10 million dollars. So you have not now uh, spent just five days uh, with banks. It doesn't even take you five, take you five hours. Uh, but we've had polished salespeople um, to come to the seminar, and um, I got a call from one of the guy's wives just a few years ago and said, if you don't pick up that goddamn phone, I'm going to call Mr. Pena. 
polished guy who made one, $2 million a year selling, stared at the phone 45 minutes. Is it because he couldn't lift the phone? Is the, uh, you know, uh, and it wasn't a cell phone, it was a regular, you know, kind of phone. That, why couldn't he pick up the phone? We've had wives call me, although we're not going to listen to uh, Gerard, the uh, lawyer who uh, rolls up veterinary clinics. Uh, please give me my husband back. He's a beast. He's like Jack the Ripper. He smacks the kids. He hasn't smacked me yet. Because I unleashed, or he unleashed in himself. You know how in the movies when the, uh, the full moon and the vampires come out, bad, you know. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. We've had kids kidnapped by intervention. They're rich parents put in camps where they put electrodes on their fucking brain to try to unpen you them. A rich Australian kid got kidnapped, put away in the uh, outback. Not once, not twice, three times. His rich family put him there and he escaped all three times. He's rolling up pharmaceuticals. Give me my son back, Mr. Pena. You've got millions. You don't need mine. Give me my granddaughter back, Mr. Pena. You've got millions. You don't need mine. Please, please, sobbing on the phone. Now you're screening multiple motivated sellers for deals, 10 days. 10 days now to get LOIs, even though they're worthless, unless you've got money to fight. Uh, LOI means nothing. And all our LOIs are subject to finance and due diligence. Again, all our LOIs are subject to finance and due diligence. Um, the, uh, and then 15 days to close the deal. Now, this is not to fund the deal. This is to close it. They're two separate categories. Funding, meaning you have the opportunity to put money in your pocket. And since most of you are bro broke, that's what you want. Even the ones that aren't broke want to still put money in your pocket. Okay? Uh, 15 days. Now, add another 60 days onto that to get it funded. To get it funded. This is commercial bank. If you're going to do 90, 10, 80, 20, 70, 30. <laughs> And before lunch, we're going to talk about the famous, infamous 60-40 deal. Now, this can all be cut in half, if not more than half, 100% seller finance. 100% seller finance. And it's easier to do 100% seller finance. This, this is a double-edged sword. It's easier if the guy's had the thing on the market for a year or two and hasn't been able to sell it. He's more susceptible. But on the other hand, he's also heard all the bullshit. So your bullshit, while it, hopefully it's sincere and hope's not a strategy, has got to overcome all the bad stuff that's happened, all the brokers that have lied to him, all the purchasers that have lied to him, to the extent that he's dealt with private equity, and they all lie. Um, the, uh, and the private equity guys, they don't call it a line, they call it marketing. But it's still not true. So, um, but that's it. And you keep that uh, wherever you keep it, so you see it all the time. And some of you will just cut it in half. Uh, and that's what the 26-day guy did. He just said that I've got half as much time. Now, he says, because I'm slow, I'm not educated, I don't talk right. Well, all that's true. You heard him, right? But he's not slow. He's, he's, he's foxy like a cat, you know? But um, he's used to selling that load of shit that, you know, I'm just slow, you know, I'm just a poor kid from Belfast, yada, yada, yada. Um, but 26 days. Any questions about this? Pretty simple, isn't it? It is. But when I told you that, the, other than that, uh, the guy was in love with Jodie Foster, uh, 22nd, and this guy's smart. 
I'm not saying that he's a lot smarter than you, but I'm saying he's a lot smarter than you. I'm not saying he's more educated than you, but with one exception in this room, he's grossly more educated than you. But he wouldn't say shit if it was in his mouth. Big time introvert, just like you. 98% of the high performance people on the planet are introverts. Zuckerberg's an introvert. Warren Buffett's an introvert. You know, Bill Gates is an introvert. Elon Musk is an introvert. You name them, they're all introverts. Last night you saw Nick, who unfortunately just passed away, the greatest tennis coach of all time, never played tennis. The greatest coach, I've talked to him several times, I tried to get him here, I was unsuccessful, now he died. He died uh, December at 88, 89. Uh, didn't even, couldn't, couldn't remember his wife's names, blah, 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 blah you know. Uh, but the, the, the cutaway for that movie is he taught and was successful at the highest level in something he never did himself. And that's what you're most afraid of. You hear me tell you, you can do it, you don't have to know anything. You've heard Peter say he didn't have to know anything. You've heard all these guys say they don't have to know anything, but that's them. That's not you. So until you do it, not knowing anything, you know, most of you don't know how to box. It was evident, but you got in the ring. It's exactly the same. That's the metaphor. That's the metaphor. And all of you tried. Um, with, and I know from the time that the last bell rung, you're already second guess. Oh, I could have done this. I could have done this. And some of you were pissed because the bell rang because you thought you had the upper hand in the exchange. And so that's the metaphor for this program. Nobody died up there. And first time, uh, I, we didn't have somebody seriously hurt because we cut all that out of YouTube. Every single time we boxed, we've had somebody seriously hurt, except yesterday. Unless somebody, uh, we're all here, you know, didn't wake up from sleep because they were in a coma or something. That's the first time. Sadly, was really happy that, you know, that uh, nobody got hurt. But we've had some, some real shit shows. I mean, kid went blind, one guy, because he got hit with two hooks at the, almost the same time and something uh, shocked the retina or did something. I don't know what it is, but he went blind. And uh, I was laughing my ass off. God damn. The paramedics just come here during the boxing, you know. But we didn't have anybody get hurt, so that's good. But you got in the ring. It's like cold calling. You're not going to die from cold calling. And that's why the guys and the groups generally like it, because they understand uh, the metaphor. And for the first time, some of you, you've ever, the first time you've ever strapped on gloves, and that's great. But it's exactly the same with QLA. As that wife said, if you don't pick up the phone, I'm going to call Mr. Pena. He ultimately picked up the phone and, because what you're now doing is you're, you have to sell yourself. Oh, you don't have to do anything. But if you want this to be effective for you, more effective than like, you've got to sell yourself. And you've got to sound like you mean it. Okay. No questions on this. Yes, sir, in the back. Uh, Mr. Pena, so um, yesterday I was doing some research just to look at my banks, and I saw like um, I had uh, for commercial banks specifically, I need to have um, a business with two years sort of uh, history, and in that way I would be able to um, kind of speak to a credit officer. Um, and I was just wondering if that's just more of like kind of like bullshit, or I actually would need to have some sort of business experience. Uh, okay, I, I don't understand the comparison. What are you comparing? What you did? to what you've got to do. Is that what you're saying? So basically, specifically for the lending, for, for, the, for the bank, commercial banks, my question is, do I need to have a business set up that actually needs to have a No! You don't have a, you're not going to set up a company. When they ask you for a business plan, and you're going to say, oh, well, this is all in the script. Well, I, I appreciate your eagerness, but I mean, we haven't even met, let alone kissed yet. 
I mean, I mean, I'm not sure there's, we have a rapprochement. I'm, I'm not sure we have any chemistry. We're interviewing, it's all in the scripts. We're interviewing now. Our board has taken the decision to uh, uh, realign our professional relationships going forward into 2023. You sound, you're gonna sound a lot smarter than you are, believe me, you're not this fucking smart. It's taken me 29 fucking years to put these scripts together. Not one word of the scripts is wrong. Not one. And to the extent that you change a word, you know, do it at your own peril. No, you, 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 all you want to do is learn how to, this is your cursor, or one of the cursors. All the interviews are a, a, a precursor to uh, getting your hand in the knickers of the motivated sellers. It's all a building block. And the more you're successful, and the more, you know, and when you're in your fifth or eighth or tenth or whatever acquisition, and uh, the motivated seller says, oh, yeah, I heard about you through so-and-so. You know, I'm ready to sign. Then you'll know that all that work was not for naught. You'll have uh, banks in the eastern uh, coast of the United States. Oh, yeah. Cash, and then they'll put the words in your mouth. Cash flow covers debt service, right? And 30 years of laying the groundwork for this. And we still don't bump into each other. That shows you how many opportunities are out there. You heard somebody say, I think it was, uh, I don't th when I say I think, that means I categorically no, and you're stupid if you don't know. That's what I'm, when I say I think. I think that Simon Voss, Simon the Nazi said, something to the effect that there's uh, 5,000 and 11,000 privately owned and uh, federally owned uh, healthcare. In his lifetime, he's not gonna go through 15,000. But it all starts with the first one. And that's what you know, scares people off, and unfortunately scares some people off that they never try. Or they try in such a half-hearted, lazy ass manner, they, they're engaging on purpose in self-sabotaging activity. I remember uh, when I was home on leave during the military, 1966, I was in Hawaii. Uh, I met my parents on leave. And uh, I had a date with uh, Miss Hawaii, Miss. Um, I got drunk up, never picked her up. That's self-sabotaging activity, okay? That taught me a lesson because after that, and I've got a lot of check marks on my belt from high-profile gals, you know, Mrs. America, Miss America. I mean, because that taught me a lesson. I fucked up. I stepped on my big dick big time, okay? And so, you know, I learned from that experience, uh, but that was self-sabotaging activity, you know? And I'm, you know, I, I don't do that. Any I was 20. I don't do that. Um, I don't know if that was the last time I ever engaged in self-sabotaging activity, but it was certainly an obvious one to me. And you guys and gals have engaged in self-sabotaging activities. Most of your self-sabotaging activities, is, it's a shitty thing to say, are your uh, partners. I mean, uh, you know, whether it's a wife, that's mostly. Because the person you don't know is... Is, is is scarier than the person that you do know. The old flabby piece of ass that you roll over on, you know, that you know. You know, that'll put up with your shit as opposed to, don't touch me. Normally it starts with who you marry. No, normally it starts with who you date. Then who you marry. And then having kids by accident. Okay, we're going to see. Thank you, YouTube.